Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a quick demo. If there is a trigger on a table and we are loading data in that table by using SSIS package. Access mode properties is set to table or view fast load by you in the OLEDB destination. Will trigger fire? If not, then which mode we need to select so we want to fire the, our trigger on the insert in the OLEDB destination. So we have these different options here and uh, I'm going to go to the uh, SSDT and uh, I will show you there and we will read uh, these options there and uh, find out which one works best for us. As uh, we are talking about the triggers, uh, so we have to create a trigger. What I'm doing here, uh, I'm in the SSMS uh, SQL Server Management Tools and I'm creating a, a sale person table uh, that has sale person ID, first name and last name. So I'm in the sales database and this is my definition for the sale person table. Now in the next part, let's execute this one. So it created a table. Next part, we want to create the history table in which our trigger will put the records and we will preserve the history for inserts. So here I'm saying select star into DBO salesperson history from DBO salesperson. This is one way to create the table from existing table. We are not inserting any data here because there is no record in the sale person. So if I run this one, this is going to create a salesperson history table from the sale person table. Execute. So this is no rows affected, but a sale person table sale person history table is created. Now, next part is, uh, let me see here, we are creating a trigger. We are creating a trigger TRG insert sale person and then we are saying uh, on this table, that's our source table and what we are doing here uh, after insert, we are inserting data into the sale person history table from the inserted. So these are inserted and deleted are uh, magic tables, uh, temporary tables that are available in uh, the trigger. Uh, and from uh, those tables, we can read uh, the data for uh, inserted, updated or deleted and put into the history tables. So uh, that, that's what I'm using because uh, we have inserted the data and the uh, inserted uh, um, is a temp table that will have uh, those inserted records uh, whatever we will insert uh, into the sale person uh, and then they will be going to the sale person history as well so now uh, let's create this trigger trigger is created what we have here we have sale person and sale person history table now let's run this one we don't have any records uh, right now to test this out uh, let's insert uh, one record into the sale person Okay, uh, run this statement. So one row affected, one row affected. The first row is affected because uh, the data is uh, uh, inserted uh, by a statement. And the second row affected, uh, that is uh, in the trigger. So it inserts uh, one row in this sale person history. Uh, let's go and take a look. Run the select statements. Uh, and now what we see, whatever the records we inserted into the sale history, uh, sorry, sale person, uh, that also went to the sale person history table by using the trigger. We are all set uh, to perform our demo now. Truncate the table right now. Let's go to the source. Uh, uh, I have a created a sample file for you, which one we will use uh, to load the data. Here, let me open it. I have sale person ID, first name, last name, and I have some records. So, so there are three records here. Let's go to SSDT, create a quick package uh, and perform this uh, demo. Now create SSIS package and we can call it uh, uh, OLEDB trigger demo or whatever. Here we will be using data flow task uh, to read the data from a source and write the data to the destination. We will use a flat file source, bring the flat file source here as we are reading the data from the text file. So click here and then create a new connection. Now browse and point to the source file. Here we, it is a, it has the column names in the first row we are going to keep as it is. It is the limited file. I'm going to go to columns and then we can re see the data is here go to advance and change the sale person ID to 
uh, integer instead of uh, worker or string otherwise we will see the warning for first name and last name I'm fine as those are strings or workers and they are the same data type in the destination so preview the data looks good retain null values from the source as null values in the destination it means if you are reading some blank values they want and you want them to read as null you can have it it's okay with us so click next now we go to the destination bring the OLEDB destination here and connect our source to it double click now we need to select the connection manager where we want to write the data so we want to select the SQL server name and then we have to select the database name in which our table is so here we know that our table is in sales database we have selected the sales database check your connection works fine now okay next part is you are selecting data access mode in here we are saying table or view that's fine it is default we are gonna leave this one as it is now go to the salesperson and map the columns so those are same names on the source and destination and they're mapped automatically now hit ok and uh, th there are still some warning for the last name and uh, uh, first name because we didn't uh, convert the data length exactly to the same uh, um, characters we, so that's why these warnings are if we want to do it we can always go and check uh, our here it is 25 and in our package it was 50 that's why it is giving us that warning but no big deal so let's uh, run our SSIS package now and see what happened right now what I have here I have a sale person and sale person history table with no data let's run the package and take a look start now here what we see three records are inserted from source to destination let's go back and uh, see the data in both tables run this one so we see that whatever we inserted in the first table that was written to the history table by using the trigger and this record was already there we forgot to truncate it that that's the reason it has four records and the other one has you know three records uh, as we inserted one record manually before even running the package now uh, let's uh, I will truncate this uh, table now both of them probably just so we can test our truncate okay table this so I'm truncating both tables now go back and what we see here if we will use the access mode is table or view it is uh, uh, initiating uh, the trigger on each of the record but if we do not want to initiate the trigger our goal is uh, okay when we run uh, or when we load the data by using the SSIS package we do not want to um, in, uh, initiate the trigger and uh, uh, if it is running to the application or anywhere somebody is putting the record yes we want to uh, run that uh, trigger or um, uh, but uh, if the da data is coming from SSIS we do not want to initiate or run that uh, trigger so here what we have now if I will change to the table or view fast load and uh, we will do the same thing run our SSIS package and see what happened it completed successfully now we run this package and we see that uh, the data is inserted successfully to the uh, destination that's the sale person but trigger, tr uh, trigger didn't fire for the so no records uh, for the sale person history table so what we learn from here if uh, we do not want to fire a trigger we can uh, select uh, the data access mode to the table or view fast load and if you want to uh, fire the trigger we can select table or view here if you are selecting table or view name from variable that will also fire the trigger but if you are selecting table or view name with the fast load trigger trigger will not get fired and for SQL statement trigger will get fired so these options are really helpful according to the requirement sometime when we load the data from the SSIS we do not want to uh, fire those triggers and uh, that's where we can come and 
uh, set the properties on the OLEDB destination depending on the requirement either we want to fire the trigger or we do not want to fire the trigger thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in next video